In the bottom left corner of the map, we have the Green Zerg from Team Root Gaming. We know a lot of his teammates are watching very intently, and we're very happy that uh, Root even joined us for one weekend. They were lots of fun, and we enjoyed having them around. It's Vibe. Vibe is uh, the USA champion from WCS, runner-up in North America, top 32 overall in the world, even though uh, he didn't advance to the round of 16. He put up a great fight, beating Vortex, who went on to place top eight. And that alone should tell you, that alone should be a testament of his skill. Fred, I got a question for you. If Alicia lived in the U.S. and he was a U.S. citizen, would he be number one NA? Or would he be number one USA? Uh, mm, yeah. Yeah. Uh, because I don't think a North American player has ever gotten to the finals of an NA, so. Nope. So. That and has a North American player has won MLGs. Uh, in fact, three of them have Huck, Huck again, and Idra. Uh, but it's the only person that's able to do it recently, quote unquote, is Huck, and that was a year ago. And a lot has changed in one year. So I would say the North American scene, while there, there's still a lot of talented players, or sorry, USA scene, because we're talking about USA, yes. not North America, because Scarlet and all of them is, in, I think, is in a different category. Um, the USA scene is still kind of lacking, but uh, I think a lot of the young and up-and-coming guys have a lot of potential. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the names. Like, like for example, Inser is very young, and he did really well at WCS this year, as we do see uh, one cannon going up. Or, sorry, oh, they're all pylons. Oh, my. Oh, oh I I, okay. I was like, man, I didn't even know this spot existed. <laughs> but uh, clearly it does not, yeah. as Alicia is just going for the cannon, trying to lock himself out. Uh, <laughs> over. Uh, very unfortunate. I mean, these pylons coming up here. Uh, this pylon, what are you doing, Alicia? Wait, you let that go up? Yeah. Huh. That yes. is unfortunate. He's going to go ahead and put down the Nexus. Uh, Vibe kind of thinks at this point that there is another probe or several probes wow. on the way right now to actually cannon his opponent. You can see how greedy. No, Vibe. I love this play. Double hatchery. Oh my god, cool. Frodan. I love this play. You bring the drones down, you double hatchery. You're not really expecting your opponent to do any gateway pressure because you see these pylons down. You're not really saying, oh, he went double pylon and then gateway. So you kind of relegate him to forge. The forge obviously isn't going to be too powerful. If a, uh, another probe comes down here, you have all these drones to really deny that. You go three hatcheries before spawning pool. It's such a clever way to actually play out this matchup. I love what we just saw. I like it too, and I think Vibe, will, if he continues this momentum, he'll have an awesome mid-game position against Protoss. Uh, well, Alicia is scouting with this probe. He will see the third base. Placed in a very nice spot. That's the kind of spot you have to go because you can't expand toward your opponent. It's very difficult on Whirlwind to move upwards the left-hand side if you're Vibe. Uh, Whirlwind, of course, features a very wide open map with lots of flanks, but the biggest thing about Whirlwind is that there's almost no chokes. Um, the only kind of small choke area is pretty much your main to your natural expansion. Everything else has a pretty big width where three, maybe four, four steals are enough to cover everything. Uh, and that's going to be really good for Vibe if he wants to go for like a Zergling or Roach kind of style to go for surrounds. Mm -hmm. uh, does weaken the power of Fungals a little bit, but come on, man. It's still Fungals. Yeah. <laughs> fungals are Fungals, man. They're always going to be good. Vibe is monstrously ahead. You're going to see in a little bit income tab just soar up. This Harvester count is going to be ridiculous. And Vibe should be able to just manhandle his opponent with that big amount of economy. Uh, I'm saying a ton of units. He can max out right now, and that's a correct decision. Normally, I would say, you know, that 11, 12 minute max isn't really that great because all these players prepare for that. But when you actually stop a push, or excuse me, a cannon rush that early in the game, and then on top of that, you get such an amazing amount of economy directly behind that. Just do it. I mean, your opponent is going to be maybe 30 seconds to a minute behind. You're going to be maybe 30 se uh, seconds to a minute ahead. It's going to collide perfectly, and you can actually stop all all-ins. On top of that, you can um, you can actually apply pressure as well. Well, uh, we'll see what Vibe just do. He's shooting up in drone shots, like he said. Ooh, Alicia. Raw 7 gate. We've seen a lot of him, or seen a lot of this out of him last season, mm -hmm. where he did this. I think... Uh, one of the most brutal seven gates I saw was on dual site against Rhett, where he just 
He just attacked. He, and yeah. Red scouted it. Red saw it coming. And he said, it doesn't matter. I'm still going to force field and kill you. And mm -hmm. it was really, really, really uh, sad to see. Like, Red did everything right. He made roaches and everything. Just got too many units caught. And that's also kind of a, a, another way to testify of, Vi of Alicia's control, his ability. He says, even if you scout this, because Vibe has an, an Overlord scout, at the right time, around 8 minutes, 7.30 to, to 8 minutes, you want to scout to see any kind of tech. He sees the ma the big swell of gateways. Should be roaches, he though. Should be n he should know. Should be roaches, roaches coming on the way. Uh, five roaches in queue, but of course, five stalkers all the way on the right-hand side. I mean, roaches are the way you counter this. Glue reconstitution is being started. Uh, you can even go back to two bases, and I think you can clean this up pretty easily. Uh, but still, I think Vibe should be should be able to keep his third base. Mm. He sees this coming, and uh, that's going to cue him to to really prepare. Only units coming out here from here oh. on out. Man, Alicia's taking all his probes off of one gas, so he's he's yeah. only one geyser. So this is going to be a raw stalker zealot. I was expecting some sentries to be mixed in there, but uh, Vibe is going to have to fight a little bit earlier, so he's pulling some of his drones to engage. Uh, Alicia still charging in with more zealots, but the rush is coming in for the flank, and the surround from the zerglings will be able to pick off most of the stalkers. And stalkers are best when grouped, not when they're isolated. Vibe should be able to hold this. Yeah, Vibe holds this so easily. And it all has to do with the beginning stages. I mean, this gets crushed, and this is the fastest possible G -G. rush. GG gets called out. Man. Vibe evens the score up 1-1. One, one. That's the fastest possible heavy aggression rush that you can do. Seven gateways. You're only going off of one single gas. He got two gas in the beginning just to get that War Prism M plus one ASAP. Yep. But after that, all minerals. He got a couple of stalkers. Was mainly going zealots. The way you counter that is you just get roaches. You get roaches, you win the game. Well done. A great series of decisions by Vive. And uh, Alicia tried to, well, he just tossed a coin in the air. And it landed on heads because he bet against the eagle. You you never bet against the yeah. eagle. Tails never fails. That game was brought to you by uh, Kingston HyperX. Check them out at kingston.com slash US slash memory slash HyperX for uh, all kinds of SSD and memory. And um, I'm pretty sure they have stuff going on for Black Friday. Check it out. We'll be back with our third game of the series, Vibe versus Alicia. The the first scenario where we see a tie, a 1-1. It's now a best of three. We'll find out what happens right after this.